Okay, come and set it up. Do I stream in 360p? Uh, I don't think so. Hey, welcome back to the stream, Schickelstein. How's it going? Notice these tentacles aren't blended as well as they could be. My microphone volume seems low today. Yes, because it's a bit farther from my face. I moved it up. How's it now? All good. Same, it might be an OBS setting. Weird. I haven't changed anything. Testing, testing. Yeah, I haven't I haven't changed anything here. Maybe I'm just not speaking as loudly. Uh, okay. Abandoning, abandoning Zeth stream for work. I see. I don't mind. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Uh, any chance that I play War Thunder? No. But I know a lot of, uh, like, Cross Out and. Yeah, like, Cross Out fans play. have moved on to War Thunder.
I took a look at the game and uh, it's a bit too realistic for me. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of outlandish stuff that you can play around with. Like I like I like building things with legs. I don't think I haven't seen any uh, any mech creations in War War Thunder. Mostly just planes, right? But no spider in the mechs. Yes, that's that's all I'm there for. Just to uh, role play as a spooky spider. April Fool's mech. Ah. It's got to be a real mech. I was actually thinking about trying to recreate Crossout in Unreal Engine 4. Just with a better market system. I think that question gets asked like every stream, will the saves get wiped? And the answer is usually yes. Signs point to yes. Yeah, it's just that there's a lot of stuff changing with the new update, the new GA update. So I think the saves will probably, I don't know if they're going to be wiped. You might have to like manually wipe them. Um, yeah, the arena update, you're going to get 
uh, all of your saves wiped on that one. Well, it's just another case of uh, devs not really listening to players, right? That's pretty much how all games die. Like, devs either stop caring and don't listen, or just, I don't know, they just stick their heads in the sand and pretend that feedback doesn't exist. It's really annoying because I've had to quit a lot of really fun games because it's after you play, play a certain amount of time, you realize that a lot of devs don't really seem to give a damn. Can't wait to paint your armor yellow. I can't wait to get like a. Uh, I want to have like uh, a blued armor set. Like blue armor with gold trim. That would be cool. It's like the classic. The classic uh, heat treatment and gilding. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. It's something we all want, but I don't think Maddox is going to let, let that happen. I'm not sure which colors are going to be added yet. But I heard uh, Brendan is working on that. And they're coming up with some very nice medieval names for the, for the color presets. I'm sure there's going to be yellow in there. <laughs> no dev secrets here. Right, I gotta be careful about what I say. I'm being watched.
the director would like to have a word with me. He's stuck in the tree. I saw that. <laughs> what a cool cat. Madoc has the coolest cat, I think. Probably the coolest Italian cat I've seen. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, Maddox sometimes shares uh, photos photos of his pet cat um, in the insider insider spam channel. Pretty epic cat, just like standing with the sun on its back. Cats conformed. <laughs> Wouldn't it suck if an SG? Kind of like in Morrowind, where they, where there's no horses because they ate all the horses. What if they ate all the cats in SG? I know it's a terrible thought, but it's something we have to think about. It probably is at least a system for for animals animal ai definitely i can see that happening What I'm doing here is I'm just trying to establish the the plates. I'm working my way up the arm. Trying to make it a little bit less messy and more functional looking.
Oh, they're doing a cyberpunk stream. That's cool. Yeah, I kind of want to go watch that too. <laughs> Is it just like cyberpunk uh, at Twitch or something? That that's what it is. If I don't catch it live, I'll just watch the the vod. Oh, that's cool. Chest area isn't very well detailed. Haven't worked on the chest area in forever. Is Madoc a lich? <laughs> Maybe. He usually plays like uh, Bellcaster types in video games. Let's go and hide the arm. I thought it's going to start moving the, the edge too. You have it unhidden and then there's sculpting. Yeah, for sure. Um, like there's only there's only mind mind thaumaturgy for now, but there's going to be many more branches. I forgot how many. <laughs> Maybe like force, light, displacement. Do what else? Body. Those are, those are just off the top of my head. Gotta get your bud, Thumb.
I'm interested in seeing if if the various schools of thaumaturgy will interact with each other somehow. I'm thinking they probably will, but I just want to see how that goes. Like imagine using like uh, energy thaumaturgy to create, I don't know, a fireball, and then using force thaum to like launch the fireball even like even farther than it can actually go normally. Yeah. Thaumaturgy synergies. That's what I'm interested in. I foresee a lot of body thumb jokes future. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder how fire is going to work. Uh, Maddox said that it's not really something that is being planned. Like objects burning to the ground or turning into ash or something like that. I wonder how that, that will go. I'm hoping that he's going to be I'm like secretly hoping that he'll he'll think he'll see that like wooden crates not burning to the ground after getting hit by a fireball uh is not not very satisfactory. But then he'll be like he'll do his Madoc thing, right? Where he's like, I'm not satisfied with this and then he, he goes and does a crazy overhaul. So I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with uh with fire. Yes. But now I don't think it's it's in the works right now. Like stuff burning, uh burning into coals and ash would be really cool. But uh, probably kind of. Well, I guess it depends on how you implement it, but it could be very uh, resource intensive. 
But not if it's done with clever masking and I don't know, like UV, UV and texture changes. Material changes over time. Oh. Wow, we just started. I'm already yawning. Fire spreading would have a combo with cloth physics. Oof, that sounds tricky. <laughs> I guess it really depends on how you, how you do it. But that's a lot of simulations going on all at the same time. Like, there's already. Uh... So, you know, like the fire? There is actually fire. In Exanima, it's on that sword. Spoiler warning, it's on that sword. And there's also lightning in the game. Uh, there's like a trap on the on the third level, like the brassy the brassy level. Uh, both of those effects are physically they're physically based they react and are they react to physics and are procedurally generated in a way to have extremely accurate physics it's pretty nutty how in depth those two effects are so attaching that effect onto cloth would be interesting to see <laughs> Is you have the physics from the cloth, and then you have the physics from the fire. Uh, so you need to have the fire collide with the cloth, uh, and also be attached with the cloth. I feel like that would be insanely resource intensive. Because you also need to have like a collision collision mesh with the cloth. Um, I guess that could be part of the collide with the actual mesh of the cloth. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious how how something like that could work without just doing it the, the cheap and, and, and normal way that most game devs do it and just use like transparency alphas. Transparency alphas and masks to simulate burning.
Later, Mercs. Enjoy the CD Projekt Red stream. I wish I can join you, but I have <laughs> this thing to sculpt right now. Sounds like it'd be a fun stream. Please, no delay. Is that for uh, Cyberpunk or for Xanima? I guess it could be for both. <laughs> yeah, both. <laughs> I figured. I'm actually kind of excited for Cyberpunk. Although I am worried that if it does have like a rocky launch, then people are going to be like, oh my god, rotten hell devs. I, I don't want to see that. that. I don't want to see the hate train that would happen. I'm really hoping that they have a successful launch. It would be awesome to have a... Have a uh, is it multiplayer? I think it's single. It's just single player, isn't it? It would be really cool to just have like a single player uh, sci-fi RPG. Like there hasn't been a whole lot of those. And there's only so many times you can replay Morrowind before. Well, actually, that's not true. You can always replay Morrowind. What am I saying? <laughs> Morrowind's the best. But yeah, it would be nice to have some throw in some variety into the gaming. You need the OxyClean update soon. What's the OxyClean update? I haven't heard of that one. That's something that Maddox hasn't told me before. Add an Oxy update. Meaning update. Ugh. Checking the silhouette of the the shoulders before I move on. Maybe we can do this bit. bit. I'm going to place in the rest of the teeth. I could do that real quick. this row here. Topological and just take them in place. Although this is a lot of teeth, I might have to cut back on the amount. Because I'm going to have to retopologize all these individual likes. And I don't want this to be too polygon heavy.
I'm just doing one side here so I can duplicate it to the other side. Save us some time. They're all facing it in the right direction. Good enough for now. We can always keep working on the teeth. There we go. I have to do something about the teeth uh, soon, soonish. I want to work on the chest detail here. It's a bit too ridgy. Whole shoulder needs work. brushes his teeth every hour. Yeah, he brushes his teeth with the flesh of uh, adventurers. You guys ever had meat floss? Like this dried, this dried meat product. It's Imagine like jerky, but it's been shredded into very fine, uh, almost floss-like Um, almost like a floss-like substance. I, I would say it's more like meat cotton. So you get like these large cotton balls of meat. Pretty nice. Pretty tasty snack. I don't know, it's very, I don't, I don't think it's very common in, in Western societies. Probably pick it up at like a Asian market though, Chinese, Chinese market.
Hey, welcome back, Mercs. Is the stream over? That was a really short stream. Or are you like watching two streams at the same time? Is the update out already? No, you have to go into hibernation for that. Like just uh just your everyday sleep isn't isn't going to be long enough for the update. Oh really? So it's just kind of like an ad. Oh well. I always like watching like the behind the scenes stuff, like just watching devs talk about their game. It's nice seeing like other people who do the same stuff as you do. <laughs> I know. Actually, the update has been released. Uh, you just you gotta. Uh, you, this is actually the nightmare part of your of your dream, uh, and you you just have to try harder to wake up. I was just talking to these guys about how uh how Maddock is going to add a microtransaction system. Uh so for those who want to like donate they can they can buy our loot boxes. <laughs> hey Conrax, welcome to Mauha's Nightmare. Uh this is this is the nightmare version, nightmare part of his dream, you know, like how you how you fall asleep without the AC on, or like if you have bundle up too tight and it's like too too hot, so you get like nightmares. Yeah, this is this is this part. I'm playing cinematic boxes. This is why Maddox was spending so much time on uh like container container UIs earlier. Like a few months back he was really working on chests and stuff. I'll I'll link I'll put like a uh I'll show what I'm talking about in, in the Discord. Like we were we were really doing stuff like this. Uh Yeah, if you if you guys look in the Xenoma Discord, you'll you'll see what was going on a few months back. Yeah, all of that it was uh, in preparation for in preparation for uh, loot boxes. I'm thinking about adding it as an emote to the the, the Discord channel. <laughs> Hold on, I think I can actually do that. Uh, let me go. Server settings. Emoji. Go upload some emoji. Has to be under two hundred and fifty six KB in size. Let's go open Photoshop and resize this. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, really? Ah, it's fine. I can I can just resize it really fast. Oh, you should upload them then. Uh, do you have the ability to upload them? Because I feel like it's it's about time to add more emojis <laughs> to the server. Like we've only had like the base Darren and Carol and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. You can send it on over. I'll I'll add them. If Maddox doesn't like it, I'll take it down. <laughs> Maybe I should ask Maddox before I add emojis. <laughs> I'll just add them very secretly. He's I'm worried he'll say no, right? If he says no, then we're kind of at it. We're kind of screwed with with emojis, right? <laughs> Don't ask Maddox. <laughs> yeah, he can't. He's a very busy guy, Maddox. He he can't be bothered to review. The kinds of emojis that I add to the server. <laughs> like he has like the new update to work on. He he doesn't have time to answer stupid questions like, oh hey, is this emoji uh emoji okay for the server? Is it does it like violate any animal welfare laws or uh anything else? <laughs> Man, I wakes up to two hundred and fifty five Thanks, Mercs. <laughs> we should actually add the the salve, the healing salve. That should be one already. A healing salve is a really good amount. Like if someone does like a sick burn, you can just give them the healing salve. Yeah, hold on. I'll I'll, I'll add the healing salve real quick. And the Darren one too. I, I actually like the Darren one. The Darren one's pretty funny. I think the soon one is a bit too hard to see. Um like the font it, it just doesn't work very well as an emoji. And I don't think if I I don't think the the fourth one would be a good one to add because I think that's like work in progress stuff. Uh but I, I will definitely add the self one and the the Darren with the red eyes. I like those two. Oh wow, why is my computer chugging? All right, we have the we have the Darren one. It's called D Mad. So if you do like the parentheses D Mad, it should work. Not I mean uh not parentheses uh colon. And then here's the self. All right, there we go. We can go give him. Uh, let's go test this out. There you go. The self works. <laughs> let's go test out the D Mad. Yeah, there we go. Darren Mad. <laughs> All right, cool.
we have new emoji. <laughs> All right, back to the back to the stream. <laughs> Enough screwing around. There's the update we everyone wanted. Yeah, right. <laughs> like new emoji is actually pretty big. I think that's actually a pretty awesome update for Xenema. We should make more of those. God, everyone's spamming it now. Oh, sorry, Mr. Com uh, Conrax. You guys want to see my latest stream combat compilation? The All Fight Club and Trash Gear Adventure series. Uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, I have uh, links turned off. Um, so you can post it in the, the Xenema Discord channel. Or you can post it here, but then like Mercs would have to permission you for for the links. But yeah, uh, you can you can post your Xanima videos in the Xanima channel. It's funny, I actually get recommended the uh, your videos sometimes, uh, Conrax. Oh, you're at work, so you can't jump on Discord. Cute. I'll I'll definitely check it out later. Like, I'll probably see it in my recommendations. To be honest, like I I usually get uh new Exanima videos recommended to me. I think I actually am sub to you, uh, on YouTube. <laughs> it looks like you guys. It looks like you guys are like cursing <laughs> in the, the chat, and there's like a swear word filter.
you'd love to see more light stuff added into the game. Uh, yeah, I think that's one of the things being worked on. Uh, the the new GI update, I think, has something for lights. I think the the light limitation is something that Madoc wanted to work on. But this is this is a better question for Madoc because there's like so much information being passed around that it's hard to keep track of everything. Um, but I feel like I've heard something on that. In that regard. Also, if it's perfectly dark, the character's eyes suggest slowly. Well, that's kind of like what the global illumination update will will bring. It won't really have like um, I don't know if it'll have light exposure. Like there, you do have light exposure in many games now, but I don't, I don't know if that's going to be included in the safe update or if it's planned. Yeah, I know light exposure is one of those things that you can that a lot of games have now. And with the GI update, like you aren't going to have like massive areas of solid crushed black, right? It's there's always going to be like some some reflections. Some reflected light coming up, coming from somewhere. It's never going to be a one hundred percent black. Oh, cool! <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> there's a light soon now. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll add the light soon, just because the the default one really sucks. Like the the default one is also gray, so you can't really see it if you have a if you're on like Discord night night mode, which I think most people have, right? I can't imagine using Discord in light. Uh, I'll update. I'll upload the soon one uh, uh, in a in a batch if if I get any more. But I I probably should get to working on a sculpt. I don't want to turn this into emoji sculpt <laughs> emoji stream. Because when I upload it to YouTube, yeah, all people are going to see is like <laughs> like me not working <laughs> uploading emoji. But I'll I'll, de I'll definitely look into uploading. More emoji after the stream, but yeah, like for now, I just want to get to work on the the sculpt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like an actual update is here. <laughs> this is what it looks like. This is what the Discord looks like when the like, whoops, what happened there? Uh, I think I just bleed my tool. Yeah, there we go. This is what the Discord looks like when updates arrive. It's like spam everywhere. <laughs> That's fine. Like the it's fine for a little bit. Like usually the channels are so quiet. So what am I doing here? This is going to be the elbow. Let's sculpt in the details, and then I'll use the move brush to stuff around. And let's use the clay build up instead.
They turned on slow mode for the first time ever. <laughs> Oh no. We really got to figure out like how to manage Discord when there's like so many people active, you know. There I think there's like a thousand or so people in well there's a thousand three hundred and fifteen people online on the Discord. Uh so we kind of have to like figure out a plan for managing the a community that gets just gets bigger by the day. I feel like we're going to run into a situation where like something bad happens and we can't really handle it. Um just because like uh it it's not really a huge focus for for us at the time as a team, I don't think to manage the community. Most of the efforts are towards development. Just wait until Seth ends up reviewing the game. Everyone keeps talking about this Seth guy, but I never... I, I looked him up and... I don't know, I've never seen this guy before. It's like some... Uh, he doesn't seem like a very nice guy. <laughs> but maybe that's just his uh, YouTube personality. You know, sometimes people just play it up really... Really dramatically, is that's kind of their style. He's a nice guy, but his fan base isn't. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, but we, we kind of have to, like, I feel like, yeah, there is going to be, like, a point in the future where we're going to be caught unprepared. With our pants down in regards to the community. Like, I just know it. This, this is definitely something that's going to happen. Like, it happens to bigger games, bigger game studios than Bare Metal. It's definitely going to happen to Bare Metal. And I think, I think Maddox is just too busy at the moment right now to. Handle a lot, handle the community stuff. The cave, caves of Quid Discord got raided with like 15k people and they had to gatekeep the Discord. Oh no. <laughs> There's some really toxic Xenoma fans. Yeah, that's just how it is for the entire, the entire hobby of games. Like you'll see like uh oh yeah this this community is really nice, everyone's so helpful and then like maybe like a year later, oh god, this community is so toxic. <laughs> then there's like And then there's like people like accusing people other people of being like white knights. And then it just like <laughs> It just goes on from there. It's like a never-ending bickering match of who can be the the most autistic. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the way I see it. All right, so the way I see it. Uh, imagine, imagine gamers as someone who's who's gone cave diving but has gotten stuck in a cave. All right, all right. So 
gamers are kind of like in a cave. Uh, they don't have anyone to talk to them that the situation is going to be okay. Uh, and when they're like screaming for help, like they feel like no one's listening to them. That's that's kind of what. Uh... <laughs> oh my God! Stop virtue signaling to the Seth. <laughs> What? I'm not virtue signaling. But yeah, gamers are like cave divers that are that have gotten into an accident and are stuck in a cave. And game developers uh, are like can either be cave cave diver rescuers who talk to the gamers, which would be a good thing, or they don't talk to them. <laughs> So, like, if you don't talk to the the person trapped and stuck in the cave, they're going to keep like, uh, like yelling, uh, for help, right? And they're just gonna keep yelling louder and louder. <laughs> yeah, like some some developers actually do that. They fill the cave with concrete and pretend it was never there, right? But the the better devs. <laughs> The better devs listen, and they repeatedly reassure uh, their fan base because that's that's kind of how I see it. Like even if you like reassure them once, that's not enough because there's always new people coming and old people going. It has to be like a constant mantra. Gotta keep constant tabs. You missed the chaotic off topic? Oh god, I don't. <laughs> that was like so bad. Like depending on the time of day you went into off topic, it would either be like super like racist, super anti Semitic. I don't know. <laughs> like God what a... God knows what was in there. <laughs> it was just like the most racist uh extremist right wing propaganda <laughs> it's like oh God, just so stupid it was like 4chan in the old days that's how bad it was oh my god really i'm sorry you had to see that i i'm sorry you had to see his swedish meatballs no one deserves to see. No one deserves to see another man's Swedish meatballs. <laughs> oh, did the soon get added? Did Madoc add the soon emote? Huh, it's not actually an emote yet. How how did you guys get it in? Oh, like Discord Nitro, huh? Okay, let me go. Let me go upload that. Like people seem to want that, so I'll I'll, I'll add that real quick. <laughs> there we 
rename this to soon. There, it's been added. <laughs> Uh, Conrax, I don't know if you'll be able to fight these in uh, three or four packs. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't do any of the engine stuff, so I don't actually go around placing these things in, in a level. So that's up for the... I think that's up to, like, Meta, Kieran, Brendan, everyone else who, who uh, actually adds stuff to the game. But who knows, maybe. I'm sure you might you might be able to run into multiple of these. We'll just see how the level design goes. Could do some throw in some quick noise in here. Also, I wouldn't be too hyped. Uh, like, you never know when these are going to be added. So they might even be added like a year from now, which is unfortunate. But at least I think this has a pretty good chance of getting into the game. Relatively soonish. Possibly with with the uh, like new story story content. Like, don't forget, I there's still uh there's still the new Proctor armor that has been added yet. That was like my my third or fourth armor that I made for Xenom, I'm, I'm really not sure. It's like a few years back. Everyone is loving the new emojis. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so did you see my petition for more chain pants? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I don't think I commented on it, though. <laughs> yeah. I know there's only like one area with with guaranteed chain chain legging drops. The thing is, like there's only so many variations of chain leggings you can have, right? And an another thing is that's more of on like a technical level of why there aren't multiple types of chain leggings. Is because uh, it's kind of like an underlayer, and 
like the the entire clothing and armor system uh, needs to be looked at and and is being looked at um like you might notice like one of the most commonly reported bugs is is the fact that there's like missing polygons around the the waist or the the crotch area when you wear certain types of armor so this is a this is like a byproduct bug of uh you you're basically what you're seeing is the the armor and the clothing system kind of popping at the seams uh it 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 just needs to needs a bit more work uh it, it's really kind of a kind of a hassle to work with at the moment so that's one of a one of the priorities along with like cloth um cloth simulation so we can have like longer pieces of clothing articles articles of clothing like skirts and stuff or trench coats that kind of kind of deal i i don't know if cloaks or capes will be added like don't get your hopes up for like cloaks but stuff like trench coats for sure and like longer longer tassels tassets that kind of thing I think Exanima is Exanima's paper doll system of like uh armor and clothing layers. It's one of the most complex systems that I've seen in any game. Is how it works is that it doesn't just like replace it doesn't replace like body parts or meshes. It actually um it actually overlaps and covers the the layers above and below so it's a it's a really like a really tricky system and there's just like no uh no clear cut method of um improving how things are it's gonna it's gonna require a bit of effort to try to get the, the armor and clothing system into a into a better place than it is already. It's like I have something stuck in my teeth. It's annoying me. I am back. Bit of chicken. Uh, has anything is anything being said about fixing flowing clothes? Flowing clothes? 
Is this like a missing textures problem? Because I don't know of any glowing clothes. It's so weird seeing Undead with shining pants and such. Uh, what kind of graphics card are you using? Because I know there's problems with AMD cards right now. Like AMD drivers are not liking Xanima for some reason. And Maddox has been pretty frustrated with AMD drivers, so I've heard. Does clothes unrealistically shiny? That shouldn't be a thing, though. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, take a screenshot and post it in the bug, uh, the features reporting section of the Discord. Because I'm like, glowing clothes shouldn't be something that exists, really. That sounds like a some sort of maybe like a driver error or no. Yeah, this creature will actually wake up uh, next to you. Like, you you and the monster will wake up together when you start the game. And then you'll have to fight it. It'll be like the, the newbie test, the tutorial boss. Some more noise. Looking at the night now. Oh, we're expecting that, were you? <laughs>
We wish Xanima had some roguelike mode. What do you mean by like a uh, roguelike mode? If if the story mode isn't roguelike, you mean like permadeath? Is kind of had that. Or do you mean like a uh, RNG, more RNG, procedurally generated uh, hallways and stuff like that? Like procedural weapons are coming, but uh, the the procedural levels procedural levels aren't going to be a thing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Madoc doesn't think uh, procedural levels are are going to be a thing for Xenema. And I have to agree too, like the levels have been set up in a in a meaningful way. I think you'll guys understand the the decision as as development continues on Xanima. It would be nice to see like some sort of separate mode aside from story mission, like an infinite dungeon mode. That could be cool. So you can keep story mode, uh, like the like a solid single player campaign experience. Uh, but then you can also just kick back and have a nice dungeon romp through procedurally generated levels. But then you kind of have to be careful with uh, developer time too, so not really something that's going to be worked on. I think at least at least for now, uh, I think the the only truly replayable content that Xanima will receive is the arena. I don't I don't think Madoc is keen on the idea of having a infinite dungeon. All right, catch you later, Conrax. Thanks for coming to the stream. Real windy today. Dude, there's like thunderstorms today. But Malaysia, apparently Malaysia has 280 thunderstorms per year on average. So it's either thunderstorm or it's not. It's like a 
toss up of whether it's going to whether there's going to be a thunderstorm or not on any given day. The weather here is pretty intense. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. I like the sir emoji. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I wonder how it'd show up in like the small version. Is thunderstorm more than monsoon? Uh, I'm not sure about monsoon, um, but I know you can get some pretty spectacular lightning uh, go outside of your window. I don't want to spam or anything, but was there a way to have Darren not chase after enemies when they flee? Uh, not yet, no. I think that's something that will be added in future future updates, though. Just like being able to like say, hey Darren, come back here or something like that, you know. The dialogue does actually affect his behavior. But I've seen him chase undead when I was playing, even if I selected the uh, the pacifist. Like as long as they don't bother us, we'll we'll let them be. Or like the I'm I'm more worried about the necromancer dialogues. He still chases undead if I select those. So.
Uh, I just come up with the designs. We don't really have a concept artist. I just, I just sculpt something and then I show the initial sculpt to Madoc and then, well, first of all, uh, how it goes is that like Madoc would say, okay, so, so Seth, we need, we need something that, uh, we need like light, light armor, or we need like medium, something like medium armor. Um, and then we just kind of discuss like what kind of materials are going to be there. Um, what the armor is going to be for, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'll, I'll come up with like an initial sculpt and I'll send it off. Uh, Maddox will okay that or say something needs to change and then I'll go make those changes or just keep sculpting and then, yeah, keep them updated with screenshots. That's kind of how, how it goes. So yeah, I actually have like a ton of creative freedom. It's pretty crazy. The reason why they look practical, uh, Biker Bandito, is that I actually uh, made some real armor in the past. I used to go to like a steel mill on my bike, and then I just like bring back like a sheet of steel to my workshop, then make some play armor with that. I'd have to bend the I'd have to bend the steel over my bike. Uh just so it'd fit in the bar between the handles. The handle and the seat. So I can like bike back. Well actually I wouldn't be able to bike back because the pedals would be blocked, so I just have to walk the the bike all the way back to the workshop. <laughs> you wanna be able to make leather armor out of what the fuck? <laughs> that's some uh that's some really dark and gritty uh Pretty scenario there. Very fitting for like uh, Diablo. I have the I have the armor that I made up on my art station. I might go check it out. Uh, just go type in, like, just go Google search Sethiros Art Station. Uh, you should be able to find it, like, first, or, like, the first link. Yeah, I, I feel like... Uh, So there's a lot of 3D artists who spend a very long time learning how to sculpt faces and learning how to do anatomy, which I do think is really important. But in video games, like 90% of the time you're wearing armor or like a helmet or something. So like all that awesome work eventually just gets covered up. And I feel like 3D artists as a whole do not spend enough time learning how to make armor. 
Like a lot of the armor in video games that I play these days looks doesn't look that great. It could be a lot better. I feel like the armor could just be a lot better. There's so much potential. There's like two two hundred years of uh, conflict in in Europe. Like, uh, just gotta look up the the references. Now look up the references, the terminology how real armor is made, what materials, what thicknesses. It's a bit more involved than just like trying to make something that looks cool. There needs to be something of substance behind the designs. Add some bumpy, you know, like details here. Super smooth here. This video game armor is blocky and weird. That's because armor is a very nuanced thing. It's a very extremely complex uh, and nuanced um, form of protection and artwork that just takes a lot of time to learn. A lot of time and dedication. Like I, I'm still learning how to, I'm like still learning stuff every day about play armor. And that's kind of been like my obsession for, I don't know, like for the past 14 years or so, I've just been obsessing over play armor. these plates is too flat. Yeah, let's gonna give it a bulge in the middle here. This is something you learn from plate armor. No plates are flat, especially in organic uh, organic creatures like this. Never have a straight line in armor. People think, seem to think bulky equals badass. It depends on the art style, I think. Um, bulky certainly wouldn't work well for a realistic art style. 
just kind of throws you off. But for stuff like hand drawn, like World of Warcraft, yeah, I can see the, I can see the appeal there. But even then, even in like hand drawn, cartoonish style, uh, a more realistic approach, I think, would, uh, would be beneficial. Forty K has to be bulky. Well, it doesn't really. I mean, it is. I feel like it's kind of ingrained into the, the art style now, but I feel like it could be a lot better if it weren't bulky and just like higher quality. More steel stops attacks, duh. Why even use armor at all? Just use tape chunks of metal to yourself. Hey, why even use like metal at all? Like the strongest armor is boob armor. Like, don't you guys understand this? Like, the more skin you show off, the higher level you are, and therefore the the higher defense you have. <laughs> it's something that they're afraid of changing. Well, yeah. I think if I think like forty forty k armor has. A ton of potential. Like you can make medieval sci-fi look pretty insane. If I were to make a 40k suit, like you guys would, like <laughs> you guys would know. Hmm, maybe Space Marine armor isn't that great after all. Maybe there should be change. <laughs> I feel like the look of uh, Space Marines in uh, in 40k is because it's due to uh, computer graphics at the time. So you're only limited to like fairly low, uh, like a pretty low number of polygons. So the artists had to make do with how however many polygons they had. I'm sure not many of them have. Well, I am kind of like assuming now, but I don't think they actually spent a whole lot of time looking at uh, real examples of plate armor, which is fair, I guess. Like, I don't think it, like, I don't think it's, I don't think it'd be very easy uh, or, or was easy to find references of plate armor online. You'd have to go to a museum for that or look at private collections. A lot of the newer models have more proper greaves. Well, that is a, that is a start. Started as a tabletop game, yeah. Shows how much I know about Warhammer 40k. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't, I don't really play Warhammer 40k stuff. But I do look at a lot of the artwork in the game, in the universe. I think there's a pre period where I binge watched a lot of uh, a lot of videos about Warhammer 40k lore.
Yeah, I have seen the Astarte shirts. Those are awesome. It really made me want to play like some sort of uh, Warhammer MMO. That'd be awesome. I'd die for like a Warhammer MMO. Like there hasn't been a sci-fi MMO since like Knights of the Old Republic or something, right? I guess there's Star Citizen, but I I don't know about Star Citizen. It doesn't seem like a very fun game to me. I feel like they put a lot of work into into marketing, but and maybe I've just like seen like work in progress stuff, but I don't know. I can't say I'm like excited to play the game, sadly. <laughs> Thoughts on D and D? Uh I really like D and D. Uh but I don't like it because it's too slow paced and because you have to rely on uh well, you also have to have friends. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's kind of like a uh it's difficult to arrange that many people. Yeah, it's funny if you have also have friends that are into it. But I feel like like D and D is kind of too slow paced for me. I get like people do have fun with like rolling dice and stuff, but I'm like, why can't you just get a computer to roll the dice for you? And then from there, why not just play a computer game because the computer takes the role of the DM, and then you can just have fun from there as a player. But really, it's just, I actually do like rolling dice and stuff like that, but it's just too slow for me. I actually get kind of like sleepy whenever I play it. I think with my my last D&D &D group, which is uh, around the time, I, I ended my D&D &D group. Uh, I, I had to stop playing because of, I had work with Bare Metal. Yeah, I got hired. Uh, I couldn't spend, what was it, like four hours every Tuesday or Thursday. We spent four hours every Tuesday or Thursday uh, together playing D&D. &D. It was fun, but it's just too slow paced for me. And also, like, you can't play it when you want to. You can't just pick it up and, uh, like, play, like, a video game. You always have to wait for for D and D time. D and D is ninety percent the people you play with. Yeah, I did have a really good group. I I I still am in like the the Discord channel with them. Um. Yeah. I feel like a lot of them have kind of moved on from D&D &D too. Just like life, life and stuff. I played uh, my character. Uh, so I had like two characters, but the first one I played was a, a drow that uh, was multi-class warlock and paladin. <laughs> That was an interesting character. He's also a bit psychotic too. Um, but he was chaotic good, so he was like he was like a good kind of psych psychotic. It's a very complex character for my first D and D, D, &D character.
And then my second one was just like a mage. It's like a kind of like a run of the mill mage, but he had a thing for making and selling sandwiches. Complex man usually means chaotic neutral. Yeah, but he also did like good stuff too. Uh, he he never really did like bad stuff, so I, I would say he leaned more towards chaotic good. So yeah, we played like uh, Lost Minds of Fandelver and then kind of branched off to like do our own campaign from there, I think. You'll never forget how you managed to get yourself to level 8 to 10 while everyone else is still level 1 to 2? What? <laughs> oh my god, you threw yourself down the throat of a dragon turtle. Wow. <laughs> Nicely played. How did you survive that? <laughs> Like, how could you breathe? Don't you have to, like, roll checks to to see if you can even breathe? Or something? I don't, I don't know. Lucky rolls. Whoa, heck it. Nice. Yeah, that's what's fun about D&D. &D. Like, if you can get the lucky rolls, and you do something outrageous, then you just... Have that awesome experience with a bunch of your friends. That's really the that's really what D and D is all about, isn't it? Three hour stream today? Maybe. We'll see. Not feeling too tired, but I have yawned a few times. I got caught up with talking about D&D, &D, so I kind of lost track of the time. Yeah, I can't wait for uh, multiplayer either, Biker Bandito. That's going to be awesome. Like, we actually talked about having uh, the Coffee Diaries set in-game, so, like, all of us devs would log into Exanima, and then we have, like, a dev room where we just talk about uh, the game while beating each other up with, like, swords and stuff. <laughs> Notice how you can actually chamber attacks in Exanima. Yeah, sort of. Was this intended? Uh, I don't know. I guess. Yeah, with like the faint system. Um, I guess Maddox had that somewhat intentional design there.
Third Gondo, you got ZBrush. Cool. But you're having trouble uh, moving. Uh, what do you mean by like moving? You mean like moving the, the model around on your screen? It's basically like you just press Alt for a lot of stuff. So Alt right click is zoom in and out. Uh, and then you can control right click or pan. And then you just like right click without using any modifier buttons, rotate. Uh, you should go check out the ZBrush, ZBrush manual. Or what you can do is actually just like press, I think F1. No, wait. It's like. No, uh, that was for like UE4. That was for Unreal Engine. If you press N1, F1 in Unreal Engine, it'll bring up the menu, manual. But... but yeah, maybe you can like press help or something here and then. Uh... Yeah, maybe like Pixelogic support or online docs. That'll help you out for sure. Just also look up uh, online tutorials. There's a lot of online tutorials out there for, for beginners, ZBrush artists. Uh, you can probably actually just go to like preferences, and check out the, um, I don't know, like hotkeys. There's somewhere. been so long since I checked out the hotkeys that I don't really ever check them anymore. It's just like natural to me, so I don't even know where they are anymore. Bad. This guy is a pretty buff dude, isn't he? Originally, I intended him to be more of like a skinny, scary Slenderman type character, but just kind of <laughs> the horse ran away with the buggy kind of deal kind of scenario. I have enough buff boys. Yo, where are my buff boys in chat? Rush. 
go position these muscles. Yeah, his other arm is going to be a flail. So we have a flail here and a shield. Oh, solo mode, so you can see all the spikes. But the spikes haven't been colored yet. And I can also probably on like poly paint. Mode. Uh, where is plastic colorize? So there's like the some very basic colors at the moment, defining what's hard and what's not. But yeah, we have like a little creature here, a little baby fetus attached to some umbilical cords, which is kind of like an arm. We have the hand that's been modified into a shield. Your imagination is terrifying. <laughs> Guess that's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> oh. I think we'll call it a uh, two hour, 30 minute stream day. Still have stuff to do. Gross. Yeah, it has been over two hours. <laughs> I don't know, like sometimes I have a lot of fun just like chatting with you guys. I'll also like sculpting the monster. This is one of the most time-consuming parts of uh, making monsters, just the the polishing part, making sure everything's 100% ready to ready to go. But yeah, we got to do this arm here, uh, the four arms, not like the four four arms, but actually the one, two, three, four arms, and then lower body. So yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty shit at estimates. But yeah, soon TM. <laughs> Get this guy done. Uh out of the monsters and armors you sculpted, which is the hardest. I'm not sure. I think I guess like the earlier stuff I did because I was still learning ZBrush at the time. Like the hardest stuff was like uh, the early stuff I did because I, as I told me about ZBrush, I was still figuring out things. Most time consuming. Uh, most time consuming is like either a toss up between. Uh, there's a sculpt on my art station page called uh, Zathanok. 
Lord of Corruption. That might have been that might have been pretty. I think that's a really time-consuming sculpt because I, I was still new to ZBrush at the time. I was trying to make something super complicated. Super complicated. Um, it's either that or the crab sculpt that I was doing just recently. Well, like a few months ago. But yeah, anyway, uh, catch you guys later tomorrow for another stream. Um, yeah, we'll just keep doing streams until this thing is done. Later, guys. Have a good one.